who are all missionaries, or we are nothing. I mean, we, we've, we've claimed that uh, we belong to the apostolic, holy apostolic, which means we are the sent. work that we can roll up our sleeves and do. And you know what? We can feel that we're accomplishing something. You know, we can see it in the people every day. And it's just a good, good feeling. And James and I feel we're going to serve as long as the Lord gives us strength and the ability. And we figure he's going to tell us when our time is up. And it's time to go back to Buffalo, New York. God has called each of us to use our own gifts in the ways that can best advance the cause of humanity. In the church we say that when one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. And so the church in Sudan and the church in the world, we join hearts and hands for peace in this beautiful land of Sudan. The first production of its kind, filmed over two and a half years in 12 countries. Windows on Mission is a series of short films that will introduce you to a diverse group of men and women from all over the United States, who bring a broad spectrum of experience and talent to their work. They include doctors, priests, even a composer. Oh, and now it's out of tune, now it's out of tune. Too high. What they have in common is that they are all serving away from home, often in remote destinations and in some of the world's poorest countries. They interface with the core issues that shape our world. They are missionaries. I'm very aware that many of the children in that room are not going to be with us in a few months' time. Through their eyes, we gain insight into the face of Christianity around the world today. I tell the story of a church that is overseas, forgotten, closeted away, hidden, and unknown to many people in the Anglican Communion or in the world because the state has effectively shut the country down. It's the lives and the stories of these other people that rejuvenate and re-empower our understanding of what it is to be Christian. I think we need them maybe more than they need us. Christianity has been here in Egypt for a long time, for almost 2,000 years, since just after the time of Pentecost, and it's still going strong today. The traditional church here, the historic church, is called the Coptic Orthodox Church. And a beautiful example of its strength is found actually where I'm standing right now, which is locally called the Cave Church. And now on Thursday evening, you can come here and see some 10,000 Coptic Orthodox Christians meeting for up to two hours for worship together. The story of Rwanda is a bitter story in many ways because it was a place of such beauty and with so many who seemed to know the Lord and yet which found such violence and hatred and, and strife in just a, short, just a short while ago. Every Christian, each one of us, is the fruit of someone's faithfulness in God's mission, whether long ago in our cultural history or within our own life story. God coming to us in Christ Jesus was a mission venture in reconciling the world to God. In the restless working of the Holy Spirit from Pentecost until today, God continues to be on mission. Sometimes, I mean, we, we, we have uh, said uh, uh, it's been a mixed blessing, <laughs> uh, you know, the kind of thing where you, you say, well, um, when the missionaries came, we say, uh, we had the land and they had the Bible, and they said, let us pray. And hey, presto, when we opened our eyes, they had the land and, and we had the Bible. Um, 
That is actually a slight distortion uh, because the gift of the Bible uh, turned out to be an incredible thing to have had and, and for, for me and many of us who were involved in the struggle against apartheid, it was the Bible that was our uh, strongest uh, weapon as it were because nothing could have been more revolutionary than what the uh, Bible was saying about human beings contrary to what apartheid was asserting. I mean, the fact that uh, each human person created in the image of God is therefore uh, a God carrier, a person of infinite, infinite worth. The only means of transportation to get to Las Mangos is to travel on this small little um, cart, on this wire all the way to the other side across this river um, that's pretty high up. Um, that's the only way we can get over there, unfortunately. Missionaries are ordinary people, like any of us. Their gifts and challenges are those that many share. They're missionaries because they've been willing to step outside their comfort zones and embark on journeys of discovery. I came to Honduras to uh, serve God. You know, that was my only focus. And being here and learning more about microfinance and, and business and, and, and different tools and models, I've learned that what I've learned in the States, you know, within my MBA degree or my finance degree, I've, I've been able to apply it. Experiencing these missionaries on film can help us identify ways in which we, wherever we are, can live into our baptismal covenant. This can help form both our personal discipleship and our parish life. I owe a very great deal to some wonderful, wonderful people. I usually say that many of us in South Africa would not be alive today had it not been for medical missionaries, the clinics and the hospitals that uh, the church, the church is built. And many of our leaders in Africa are people who were trained uh, in missionary schools. I was very fortunate uh, in, in many ways to have been exposed to, for instance, the community of the resurrection uh, and uh, to have fallen, as many others did, under the spell of Trevor Huddleston, uh, who, when I was in hospital with TB for 20 months, uh, wonderfully made a township ghetto urchin like me uh, feel special because he would take the time to come to visit me, to bring me books. Uh, and you never know, I mean, who are the people you think you are emulating. After spending millions of rupees, over 150 years, if I can count 10 converted people uh, of this tribe and of this ethnicity towards Christianity, I would be jumping with joy. But then the question is, is that what Christian service is all about? Is it a bargain that if we invest, we will get so many Christians? Certainly not, because our investment is for God's kingdom. And these people are as much part of God's kingdom as we are. He is blind at this moment, but uh, the next day after the cataract surgery, he can see the world with the grace of God. I myself have, have always contended that uh, our God embraces all. And if you, if you wipe someone's tears, uh, God will not say, now the, the wiper of those tears was, was that a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or an atheist? Uh, the God that I worship uh, is truly Catholic. Uh, and all of, all of those who help to make this world a slightly more gentle, more caring, more loving, 
um, will be people who are advancing the kingdom. These old grannies are talking about how they built their church building with their own hands, collecting bricks from abandoned buildings and working through the summer even in 100 degree heat. This is what I've come to really value here in China as a Christian, is to be a practitioner of Christ's way. And people see that and they say, oh, this person's different. And then they try to figure out why you're different. And when they find out, you can share with them. And then you have an effect on their life as they join with you in your work. In the work I'm doing, people come and join with me. And then we have a, a whole group of people who are practitioners of the way. And it's very exciting. I think one of my greatest weaknesses uh, looking back in the struggle against apartheid was that I was, I got to be too abrasive, um, and and, uh, and that when when you are right, it is so easy to become self-righteous. Uh, if if those who seek to be messengers of the gospel of grace, then it helps enormously if they communicate that message graciously. I think I should have learned that. <laughs> One thing I've learned in life is that you can't say exactly what you're going to do in the future. Everything changes, you know. <clears throat> you think you're going to be a big rock star and be winning Grammys and you find yourself in a parish in Rio Abajo in Panama. And so you can't be sure. I think the most important thing for us is being open and praying and finding out where God's calling us. So, And we definitely feel God called us here to Panama, so, you know, we'll find out where God calls us next. The reason I came is that my wife came. You know, those of you who watched Laugh-In some decades ago will remember the line, blow in my ear, I'll follow you anywhere. So Nan blew in my ear and I followed her to East Africa. And that's, that's really why I'm here. <laughs> that's great. Well, I do do that. I follow her anywhere. <laughs> and and I think that uh, some of the most eloquent um, witnesses to the Christian gospel are those who actually are side by side, especially with people in need and 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 incarnate God's concern and love, and and if. If they do that with an integrity, it must be something that then makes people, what makes you want to do this? And then you have the opportunity to say, I am here really because I love Jesus and Jesus has impelled me to come here. And I hope that my touch will be, to some extent, his touch. We are all, always missionaries, or we are nothing.